Let's work on the first question of the third meter. In a configuration like this, with one op amp, we knew that the output we wanted was 600 or 331 volts when the input was 2 volts. Out of the four resistors, three were given 20 ohms, 20 ohms and 400 ohms in this case. We need to find what is the value of B of this resistor up here. How do we do that? If we use MNA, we have to be prepared for the reality that MNA can solve only for three types of unknowns for node voltages, for evil currents, and for control variables. If we try to use MNA to find one of the resistors, then we will end having non linear equations, which is fine if we're solving the system by hand, but not if we're using the HP50G. How can I proceed then? Well, uh, let's see. I begin by identifying nodes. This is going to be node 1, and this, of course, is node n, which happens to be also the output node, and this is node p. There is negative feedback. That means that vn is equal to vp, and because of the way it's connected, vn is also v0. Conclusion, vn is v0, and vp is also v0. In our equations, we need to find uh, this current and this one. Uh, the direction, of course, is arbitrarily chosen. This is M and A, and we write two equations. The first one for node 1, KCL1, KCL for node 1. But instead of writing them here, let me write them directly on the screen of the HP50G. KCL for node 1 currents going in only one Vs minus V1 divided by A, which is 20 is known, but I'm writing A, all right, because there are several types of exams that I need to grade. And that is equal to the two currents leaving the node. One of them is this one, V1 minus Vp. But remember, Vp is equal to Vn, and Vn is equal to V0. So this is V1 minus V0 divided by C. That is this term of current here. Plus the other current, the one through resistor B. V1 minus Vn, which is V0. V1 minus V0 divided by B. That is case L1. For node P, there are only two currents. One going in, V1 minus Vp. Vp is Vn, Vn is V0. V1 minus V0 divided by C. That is equal to the only one current leaving. Vp, which is Vn, which is V0, divided by D. You say, what about this one? That current is zero. You and I know that, right? The current entering the op-amp, an ideal op-amp is zero amp. So we have two equations, and we have two unknowns we can solve for. We choose the unknowns. Do not choose B, because B is in the denominator, and that would make the system of equations a nonlinear one. Solve for either node voltages, control, equa control variables, or evil branch currents. We have no control variables, no evil branches, so we can solve only for node voltages. Let me solve then for V0 and for V1. You say, but V0 is given. It doesn't matter. Let's solve it like that. Give me the value of V1. Give me the value of V0. Solve for that. Let me move this over here. so that I can ask for a symbolic solver and a linear solver. And those are the values of V1 and V0. Observe that those are formulas given in terms of the four resistors A, B, C, D, and of the input source Vs. This one at the bottom, V0, is actually an equation. We know what is V0 already, and on the right-hand side, we know everything except for B. If we break that into pieces, this solution with a program's type, break the object into pieces, concentrate of that, that is an equation where we know everything but B, solve for B. How do I solve an equation that has only one unknown in B? First, I make the independent variable B, and you know how to do that, mode CIS independent variables B, and then go for the symbolic solver and solve for X, this X, and that is B. 
in terms of the three known resistors and of V0 and of Vs, just a formula to find B. And once we have that B, we can substitute that in the equation for V1 and find what is the value of V1 as a number. Let me do that. An easy and quick way of doing that is to create a variables, global variables with the values of A, B, sorry, A, C, D, and V, S, and V0, put a number here, and then you ask the calculator to evaluate that. Boom! It tells you the value of B has to be 300 ohms, and we have the first of the questions that we wanted, but the exercise was asking us something else. What happens if we connect now, and let me move over here, we connect a resistor at the output Rx, and that resistor it was a 5 ohm resistor. And we want to know what is the output power of the op-amp. And the hint was compute what is the output current of the op-amp, this current here. How do I compute that? Well, if I look again, and we show that in class, and the KCL equations that we wrote to solve that circuit, we realized that uh, this resistor here will not change the KCL equations of nodes 1 or N, sorry, of 1 or P, so that V0 will continue to have the same value and this current IX will be known. This current will be, sorry, this is IX, that will be V0, which is known, divided by Rx, which is also known. To find this one, we could use KCL if only we knew what is occurring here. Well, this current entering the op-amp is zero, and this is one current we can compute is V1, which is known, minus the output voltage that is also known, divided by B, that is 300 ohms. We know what is that current. Let me call that IB. The current I0 will be just uh, Ix minus Ib, a simple application of, um, this is I0, of KCL and the output node. And if you're thinking, you told us never to write a KCL equation on the output node, no. I told you not to write a KCL equation on the output node in the first stage of the solution, when you were solving for voltages. But the voltages are already known, so now I can use KCL anywhere I need. And I need to find that I not. Once we have that, of course, the output power of that op-amp will be just the voltage here, which is V0, multiplied by the current. And that was the solution to that first question. Let me put some numbers to that conversation. This B equals to 300. Let me break that object into pieces the way you know, object into pieces, eliminate this, swap. Mm, now I can say 300 in a variable B. Store. Look at them. Variable B has been defined, so I can evaluate that expression with the evaluate key like so, and I know that V1 is 630 divided by 331. Now we are ready. We know V0, we know V1, and we know B, which is 300 uh, ohms. We can compute uh, what is the value of the current IB. Allow me. Program types, break the object into pieces, because I want that value there, right? That is V1. V1, and then V1 minus 600 divided 331, which is V0, subtract, divide by 300, which is B. That is the value of the current IB. If I subtract the current, um, that from the current IX, and the current IX is V0, 600 divided by 331, and that divided by the 5 ohms of that resistor. So this is the current IX. IX minus this current, sure, uh, that should be the value of the output current of the op-amp. If I multiply that and by the value of the voltage, which was what? 600 divided by 331 
divide. Multiply, we know by that. That is the power, the output power of the OPAP, you see, but that is a monstrosity. Give me a floating point value. Well, first let me simplify that. That is the output power. It's still not a number that I'd like to report. Make that into a floating point answer. That is 0 0.6566 watts. That is the output power of the OPAMP, and that is the end of this question. Thank you very much.